last time on Painting with Rainy. But what we're going to do is basic shapes today because I think drawing is a prerequisite to painting always. So we're going to learn five basic shapes, five basic shapes, and we're all going to draw them together, okay? It's going to be real easy. And then we're going to make those shapes two-dimensional, and then we're going to add color. Well, that's lovely. Look at these nice big shapes. See how simple this is? And then this is the good part because you really get to get your fingers into it, start moving around. Then you just want to smooth it out. Spray this out. Now this will hold everything in place when we start to add our color. It's wonderful. Oh, that looks great. I'm so pleased. See, if you can do that, then there's nothing that you can't paint. Now part two, as Rainy and her students add shadows and color. We all have our color laid out on our palettes. And the colors we're using are cadmium red, alizarin crimson. We have a lemon yellow, and a cadmium yellow light and a lemon yellow. We have an ultramarine blue and a cerulean blue. We have a hooker's green and a lime green, and then we have white. We're not, we don't have any, any black or any dark brown because we've already got all the darks on our, on our drawing that we're gonna need, except for the shadows, <laughs> which, which we forgot to put on. Imagine that, we forgot to put something on in a, in a drawing. So I'm going to place my palette down, just carefully so. We're gonna go back to our drawings and get our charcoal, and then we're gonna put our shadow because that, that creates even more of this three-dimensional quality that we really need to have because of what we're gonna do. It's okay, we're just gonna spritz our little, our little fixative after that. Okay, so the, the light's coming here. We're going to create a shadow right here for the sphere. Now see how that just makes that sphere look like it's totally grounded. Now, the secret to a shadow, all shadows, is the shadow is darkest, the closest to the object that it gets. And it softens out and gets lighter the farther away. So if you can kind of indicate that for me a little bit, I think that would be lovely. And I'll get some more paper towel here. We can't have three-dimensional things without shading. And you, ha and you can't have the shading without indicating light. And that means that there's going to be a shadow. So that's what we're going to put on there. The shadow for our cube is going to be very easy because most of it is behind the sphere. Once again, you want it very dark right next to the object, and then lighter, the farther away from the object it goes. And the more you add these lights and darks, the more the, the shapes just really seem to overlap each other. It really gives you a sense of, of receding. Okay, so I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. This is just building to that crescendo of adding the color. Now the cone, once again, we're going to come out from this, where that ellipse is, here. And then we're going to pretend that our other ellipse is about right here. So we're just going to draw a line that's going to meet the point of the cone. We're going to come in next to the cone, right where that is. And we're going to be very dark. And then very, very lightly blend outward. Once again, your lighter part is going to be farther away from the object. And if you need to do any refining, just get your little eraser. And that works perfectly. Now for the hemisphere, the same thing. very dark near the bottom of the sphere, lighter the farther away you go, okay? 
Now for the cylinder, same thing, right where this ellip ellipse is, and the ellipse is that, that edge of, of where your oval meets your line. So we're going to come out about right here. We're going to sort of estimate where the other side of that ellipse is, which is about like so. And then we've got kind of a curved top. Rainy. Uh-huh. I need another piece of charcoal. Okay. <laughs> I totally understand that. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I haven't bogarted all the time. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I have a I have a little piece right here that <laughs> that fell on the floor. Oh, it's so teeny tiny. You've been so diligent. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, and here's another little piece. And these are pieces that I dropped. Does anybody else need charcoal? Are we okay? Everybody home, you got your charcoal? A big old box of fine charcoal doesn't cost much at all, and you'll go through it just as surely as can be. Okay. Now. Blow your excess off. I've got the fixative here again. I'm just going to very lightly spray. And the sound of that charcoal scratching on the board just makes you sound so busy. I'm going to go back in here and darken this up just a little bit. Who knew just a drawing would involve all this? <laughs> but if you get a paint, you got to know how to draw. There's no way around it. Unless you want to throw some color out there, and then you got to know about color theory. And that's a whole nother show. What this show is about, how just, a, just a, a layer of color can add and make so much difference in what you're doing. Okay, so here's the fixative. I've just given you all the fixative. Hairspray at home, if you, if you have hairspray, you can use that as well. I have two little nubs of charcoal left here, if anybody needs any more. And then we'll be ready to apply our color. I, I'm having trouble with the shadow on my cylinder. Okay. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this to put This is darling. That looks like your little hemisphere has little tongues sticking out. It does. Okay. So um, may I borrow your charcoal? Oh, and, I, and I promise not to. Okay. Because your light's coming this way, first of all, your hemisphere is going to have, ah. um, your shadow is going to be a little bit more like that instead of like a, a wagon tongue. But the tongue was cute. I like that. <laughs> and you can certainly do that <laughs> at any other time. Your cylinder, you're going to bring your line out about right here. Let's say the other side of the cylinder is about right here. So you just want to kind of, hmm. See? Well, it's okay because shadows do overlap. Sometimes it makes for an interesting, let's make it more narrow. We'll put it here and we'll put it here. And then smooth it around like that. That's what we'll do. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Because I want you to like it. <laughs> which parts are supposed to be lighter and which parts are supposed to Shadows be Shadows are always darker right next to the object. Right, okay. right next to the object. Thank yes. You. Oh, we saved it. I yes. <laughs> just love it. Give me a problem and <laughs> let's save it. Hey, Rainy, how would I do my ceiling? Because mine's not out as much. Oh. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Oh, well, you're just going to run it right off the page. Just run it right off. Uh huh. Whole arm, just take it. Yes. Now, just sort of estimate where the other side would be, and then just come through here and run it right off. And it would be darker right in here than it would be right there. Now, Miss Vicki, have you ever drawn shapes before? Never. <laughs> What was your first clue? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. One of you said something about stick figures, but I'm really confused about that right now because, see, already we've gone beyond that. We have gone beyond all that. Let's see. Now, this is acrylic. It's a water-based medium. It dries very quickly. You can glaze over it. 
and we've put all these colors out there because I want you to be able to choose whatever color it is you want you want to paint your objects. You can paint them any color you want them. I would like each object to be one color and then you can paint the background whatever color you want to paint it. You were going to also paint your shadow because shadows have some of the color of what is creating the shadow in it. So we want to show that as well. So now grab a brush, probably a flat. This is a size, this is a size 10 flat and it is a, it's an acrylic, it's a white nylon, it's called a bright. And so grab those brushes and that'll help you get into some of the corners too. The stroke is the object. So whenever you're painting something, you want to kind of maintain the integrity of the object and that will be your stroke. Also, uh, whatever color you decide to use, um, let's say I want my sphere to be cadmium. So I'm going to pull aside some of this cadmium red and dip into your water and what we want is a very, very thin mixture of paint. Pick out whatever color you want. I'm going to paint the sphere red and I'm going to keep adding water to my mixture until, it's, until I can almost see the palette underneath it. I want it to be a glaze. This is not a heavy impasto application. This is a glaze. Now I'm giving you all kinds of technical terms that can be very useful um, if you know what they are. So you can play this back or you can look it up if you like, but these are the words and we'll try to put up as many as we can. But we want a glaze mixture, not a heavy impasto mixture. So I'm going to get a little more water yet. Then I'm going to start, I, st I want it to be very, very wet, so I'm just going to go to some more. Now I'm going to start painting my sphere and I'm going to follow the form dip back into my color mixture. Just have at it. And you'll see that we're not picking up the charcoal, which is wonderful, because we've sprayed it with our fixative. And my strokes are round, they're circular. This is so I can really get a feel for the roundness of the shape. And I didn't have to add any black to it because we've already done that with the charcoal. The thing about the Grisail method is you work out where all your lights and darks are before you add your color. And then all you have to do is do your glazes of color and all of the, all of the shading has been worked out for you already. Now I'm going to thin it out just a little bit more and I'm going to paint into the shadow. Just pull it out with the brush. Okay. All that with just red glaze. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out really, really well. Now, I'm going to get another color. I think I'm going to have a blue block, blue box, or a blue block. Do the same thing with your next color. I'm going to mix my cerulean blue and I'm going to mix the ultramarine blue to make a new color, to make an octanic color. Octanics make a color that's brighter and bolder than the two colors that you mix together. So this blue here, as you can see, is, ha has a brighter, bolder hue uh, and tint than, than either one of these together. So there are all kinds of ways that you can mix colors. You can mix complements. You can add black, you can add white, or you can add two, two different colors in the same hue, in the same family. I'm going to add more and more water. Just dip your brush in the water. Get it as wet as you can. so that your grisaille, your underdrawing, will show through. And we're just going to paint. Now when I paint my box, I'm going to paint the top first using straight strokes. I'm going to paint the side 
just going to pull it down using straight strokes because that's the form of the box. And I'm going to do the shadow side. Just drop your arm down. All the shading has been done for us. So just pull your brush strokes down and I'm going to go over the shadow area too. Same way. And if you happen to go over, because it is acrylic, you can just sort of wipe it off. You might have to doctor it a little bit, which is kind of what I'm going to do here. And voila. Okay. So I'm going to mix, I'm just going to mix a little cadmium red and some cadmium yellow and just have a nice orange. The next exercise is to do another, another painting, another drawing, and actually make shapes. Add some character to each of the shapes that we've already done here. Now I'm wetting this orange down just like I want you to do each color, get it very, very wet to a glaze consistency. Now there's this thing that you can get that'll make a glaze out of your paint, but it's always nice to know that you have enough uh, mobility and enough control over your paint that you can get the glaze consistency yourself. So. Okay, I'm just painting down onto the cone. And I'm going to paint into the shadow area. Then that's so dark that we just have a sense of the, of the color. Rinse your brush out really well between each color. Okay, now I'm going to do a yellow hemisphere because it's a little bitty thing and I want to have a pop of color. So I'm just going to take some lots of water and add it to my yellow and I'm going to come up here, start with the inside. And then I'm going to paint. And it's a good thing I used yellow because it's so dark. Yellow is a good color to keep it in check. Get some yellow in my shadow. All right. Now fear not, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my last shape. And that frees me up so that I can help whoever. At home, if you're feeling like you're a little rushed, just put it aside. You can come back to it later. You don't have to finish everything right now. Um, but it is a wonderful exercise to do again and again and again uh, with different colors or with just white for you professionals out there. And it really makes a difference in how you see light. Okay, I guess green will be in my next one. I'm going to use a dark green. No, I'm going to mix a teal. I'm going to mix some cerulean into my hooker's green. You can make any color you want to make. You can paint in any color you want to paint. The world is your color box. Oh, and another hint about the artist <laughs> is he likes bridges. Okay, what I miss, we have, we have laughter coming over there. Has something emerged from one of those shapes that is not what we've talked about? <laughs> cool. Okay, that was a, that color's a little too. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got some good laughter going. I missed it. I missed it. Okay. Uh, still not as glazy as I'd like, so I just added some water directly to my brush 
and I'm just bringing it on down. And sliding it over the shadow area. And then that's done. Now if you want to get really crafty and you want to paint the background, you can do that as well. I'm going to erase my little check mark here. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to some of this big pile of color I've got going here in the middle. And and then I'm going to add a lot of water to it. And then that and then I'm just going to play around with it and that's going to be basically my background. So that I don't have anything white. Okay, I'm finished with my shapes. How about y'all? So let me go around and I'll take a look and see where we are. And then we're gonna add one more little highlight. Got one more shape. <gasps> one more little shape. Okay, we're doing good. Oh, good colors, Brittany, I like those. They're very jewel tone. Oh, that's wonderful, Elizabeth. <gasps> you are so talented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the thing is, when you turn them around and you look at them all together, it's, it's like a symphony that's just being exposed. Then, as I said, when you get that done, we have a one more little thing. Everybody's smiling. <laughs> that's a good thing. Art makes you happy. Are you happy? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Answer me. I'm the teacher. <laughs> Are you happy at home? You should be. You should be. This should be the happy time when, when you take time away from your regular, just harried schedule to paint. Painting is good. Painting is we a very... Lost, we are lost in the moment. <laughs> you, you yes. really are. Am I interrupting the moment? <laughs> well, that's the other reason I'm here. <laughs> to interrupt your moment. And of course, if you don't have an ample amount of paint all over your, your hands and, and clothes, then, then you really haven't, haven't put yourself into it the way I fully expected you to. <laughs> Brittany, you, you, are, you are there, Brittany. <laughs> you have arrived. One of the things I wanted to do also was just to put a very small highlight on my round shape, just right here. And that just really accentuates where the light comes from so that you'll be sure and just gives it that final roundness of appearance. Because when you get the background, you just want a very, very, very light wash, very much like the glaze. But just very so just keep adding more water just into this little area right here a lot of mistakes that people make is that they they keep dipping into the pile of paint and then just creates like more just and more <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's okay right. it made a great example for what i needed to tell everyone else Happy to be <laughs> a little, yeah, i'm so <laughs> glad too <laughs> yes yes Brittany, you go girl uh-huh just get that just swoop it on up there okay just go ahead and start now what you can do vicky um is when you get your your water yeah your paint up there dip your brush directly into the water and then go directly back to the to the canvas What's board and then that uh-huh uh -huh. and then that uh -huh. And then that'll help you just smooth it all out. Oh yeah. And Elizabeth, you might uh, dip your brush right back into your water and go directly from your water to your board and then you, oh yeah, smooth it out. Make it very, very viscous, very wet, very washed out because this is in the background. So while you're working on your backgrounds, really, really quickly we're just going to throw that water up there and swish the brush all around and cover all the white. Then we're going to take 
you're going to take your little brush, dip it into the white, <laughs> or you can dip it into your, to your partner's palette or, or to your neighbor's palette. That, that works too. <laughs> and we're just going to get a little glob of white and we're just going to make a little dip mark right on your sphere just to show where the light comes in. Because on a sphere, on a, a, that's a shiny surface. We're going to assume that's a, a shiny surface. And so we're just going to put that little white mark exactly where the light <laughs> is hitting. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> you did your dip mark already. You did the mark. Y'all yeah. are just so good. <gasps> wow. I have to have you back next time. What do you say, Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Lou. I'm going to see. I just artist blocked I'm going to see. <laughs> That's just how it happens. <laughs> There's always a critique at the end of a class. And that's everybody's favorite part. How many of you would come back and do this again? I would. Okay. <laughs> two, two out of three. I'm <laughs> Elizabeth, my hands are busy. I'm shocked. <laughs> my hands are concentrated. <laughs> you got to put your name on it. Go ahead and sign uh -oh. it now while you can. Get your little brush and, and put your oh name on it. Gosh. Oh, I got to do that too. No, we didn't think about one. <laughs> can we sign it anywhere? Sign it in. Well, yes, you can sign it anywhere. Can Usually, it? paintings are signed in the lower left or the lower right. But you can sign it wherever you want to. Well, I'm Some, not orig I'm original. You, you are original. <laughs> this is very true. Some, some artists don't like you to see the signature unless you look really, really closely. So they kind of they hide it. They hide it in whatever the subject matter is. Some make their name so big that it's part of the, the painting, whether it's meant to be or not. Okay. <laughs> How are we doing? Great. We are? Yes. Are we ready to turn it around so we can all see? Miss Vicky. Ready. <laughs> all right. Let's turn these babies around and see what we got. From stick figure to almost stick figure to sorta, we have we have incredible <laughs> we've got incredible compositions here. <gasps> Masterpieces. Oh! I tell you, know what? This has a very Cezanne type look to it. Um, you're kind of a gauguin -ish. And then the red. Oh, gosh. Who's, who's the red? Um, oh, gosh. I can't even say. It's, it's so very red. It's Christmas. You've got a Christmas scene there. They're all wonderful. Thank you so much. Did this help you? Yeah. At home, there you go. The five basic shapes. Today you've learned them. You learned the Grisale method and you learned how to color wash over them so that you don't have to worry about anything in the final piece but, but the color. Thank you so much. Thank Remember you. to email me at paintingwithrainy uh, at gmail.com uh, to, to let me know what, what the artist, give me the name of the artist. And um, until then, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>